So now on to step five, we're going to want to start with just finding our value first. Um, simple integer. Looks like it's already right there. So here's our value. Let's go ahead and see what accesses it. Doesn't look like we have anything constantly checking it, but we remember from the 32-bit tutorial on step five, what seemed like it was going on was it's actually checking its last value to see if we've uh, freezed it correctly. Um, so we can't just necessarily freeze it outright with a high value. We need to actually stop it from changing it from its last value. Um, based on some general common sense or just some general looking and having done this a little bit, it seems like what we're doing is we're reading here, EAX is getting set, and then at some point in between these two instructions, EAX changes and sets EDX may run through the stack it could be anything really um, but then right after that it re reads the uh, the value at that address to start checking so we might want to just start here and see where this leads us now yeah see we got EAX getting compared to something on the stack so let's go ahead and see what that is so that looks like that's actually our last value 7, 225, so yeah. So there it's actually the compare for our last value, so this one should be pretty straightforward because we see here that we're jump if equal to down here. So we just want to make sure it always comes here no matter what. So in this case, all we can do is basically change this 7, 4 to an EB like this jump is, and then it'll always jump to this spot. So let's go ahead and set that up. Make sure we select our correct address. We're just going to do a simple injection so we don't need to worry about that jump below it. Um, we'll go ahead and do an address injection. I mean, an address injection. And let's copy all this, throw it in our preferred text editor, whichever it is. And then we'll start cleaning this up. So this one all we really need is technically don't even really have to have it but again it will make things a little nicer when it comes to if there's a change in the code or something like that. Actually I want to go ahead and throw this in here. Let me throw it back in there. Um, So then, but we're only wanting to change one byte, so let's just go ahead and only set the one byte we want to change. And then what we can do here is data byte and EB, and that'll change that jump up equal to a jump. Um, and this should set it up to where when we hit that button, the change value button, Signed a cheat table so we don't lose our script. Um, when we sign it to the or um, when we en enable this, it should set it up so it just automatically jumps. And then, so then when we actually hit this change value, it will just always think that the value didn't change, even though it has. Let's go ahead and name this step five, enable it. So we can kind of see what's going on there. It's like I said, it's just changing that one byte. We're just making it skip this other jump and the check entirely, and it really won't care. It'd only be if you find out that it has another check somewhere deeper, say in this call, that you might actually need to inject up here and change how it's checking. Um, and make it, you know, maybe set this value so it is equal always and it does check it and think it's equal. Um, cause that'd be another way to do it. It's just actually make the compare work out right before it does the compare. But go ahead and try that. And so you can see there, the value does change this time. Unlike with the 32 bit tutorial, how we did that one, but it doesn't know that it's changing. It, it thinks it's staying the same. So we can go ahead and move on to step six.